Now Florida's most watched morning news. 7 News Today in Florida. The following is a rebroadcast of 7 News, recorded earlier this evening. This is 7 News at 11. Hello and welcome, everyone. We begin tonight with a story that hits painfully close to home and one we hoped we would never have to report. Ed Anson, the owner of Channel 7, has passed away. He was a giant in the broadcast industry, and he loved this television station and his two in Boston as well, and all of the people in them. Mr. Anson was also incredibly generous to the communities he considered home, South Florida and parts of Massachusetts, all of which made this innovative broadcaster successful, respected, and revered. As a broadcast pioneer, Ed Anson changed the television industry. And it all started in 1962 when his father, Sidney, bought the South Florida station, then known as WCKT TV. At that time, an NBC affiliate until nearly 30 years later when NBC would pull the peacock from Channel 7. In those days, that as an affiliate in Miami, we were an appendage of the network. And we had a limited opportunity in which we stood out because of what we did locally. That was the news. Anson knew to succeed, his television station had to stand out. And to accomplish that, he had to break the mold. Now everybody predicted, I say the world predicted, that this was not going to work. I got the bright idea, 6 to 9 in the morning. But it did work. WSVN-TV joined the Fox network, and with a new vision, 7 News blazed a new path. You had to be creative, innovative, you know, uh, survive, you know. We can't afford to be boring. You have to keep doing new things. And to both supporters and critics alike, one thing was undeniable. 7 News was anything but boring. WSVN-TV was highly successful. The fast-paced, visually compelling, and innovative newscasts were emulated across the country. Anson also wanted to bring that energy to his hometown of Boston. Anson's Sunbeam Television Corporation would reach beyond the Sunshine State and into the Northeast when he purchased a WHDH TV in 1993. WHDH was a CBS affiliate at the time, but just a few years later, he once again became a partner with the Peacock as an NBC affiliate. It was a great partnership for more than 20 years and led to great ratings success, but the relationship would end. WHDH lost its NBC affiliation in January of 2017. But Anson had been through this before and knew necessity is the mother of invention. WHDH became an independent station. For Anson, it was not just about delivering the news, but working to build a better community. Over the decades, Anson gave generously to the United Way. <laughs> Habitat for Humanity, feeding South Florida, boys and girls clubs, and best buddies, to name just a few. In terms of philanthropy, I mean, I... I, I feel that I'm in a position to be philanthropic, and I should, and I enjoy being philanthropic. But the reality is, as a television station, for the audience to relate to you, you have to relate to the audience. Far from a hands-off owner, Ed Anson walked through the doors of WSVN-TV every day. He once said he didn't look forward to the many holidays because it meant there weren't many people for him to talk to at work. He was a true leader, not just by title, but by example. Anson told the Boston Globe, I want to die with my boots on. And that's what he did. Anson was in the office just this past Friday doing what he loved. When asked previously how he wanted viewers to think of his stations, Anson was humble but clear. I, I want to know that every day, day we do the best we can and we try to continue to engage our audience and uh, give them the best newscast and everything else that we can and, and uh, it works for us. Under the leadership of Anson's sons, Andy and James, we will continue his work and follow his vision into the future. I was thinking as we were starting to put that together, so few people have the opportunity to work for one person, really, for nearly 30 years, as both of us, of us did. Um, and that's what makes it so special, that, that so much of what we have and who we've become and what we've been able to achieve professionally and perhaps personally, too, we owe to him. It's, I still can't believe it. I just looked at that last shot of the office door with him not there and thinking now, you know, I'm never going to see him walk out because sometimes we'd walk out sure. together in the yeah. evening. It's still, it's hard to believe, but yeah, I, I, indeed. You gave this girl from Hialeah more than she ever dreamed, mm. and I'm glad I had the opportunity to say thank you, Ed.
thank you to the Anson family, and our hearts are with you. We're going to keep doing the best we can. We will, and as he would expect of us, we will take a short break and come back with more of the day's news right after this. Selkies and Craig, only on the news station, 7 News. I'm Jeff Kent. Get it right. Now to a container conflict in Hialeah, a community voices frustration with a refrigerated container that's behind a funeral home there. These folks fear the business could expose them to COVID-19. The funeral home folks say there's no health hazard. The night team's Rafael Pires reports from Hialeah with more on the frustration and the latest in the coronavirus pandemic. That's ridiculous. I want it out of my neighborhood. Fear and frustration. It is affecting us psychologically. Liliana Acosta and her neighbors protesting a refrigerated container behind San Jose Funeral Home off East 4th Avenue in Hialeah. It is uh, a foot and a half away from my fence. We don't even park in the hospital, not right here for the neighborhood. The business butts up to the Los Portales community. Residents fear the container is being used to store deceased COVID-19 patients. We don't know enough about COVID. I have kids. I don't know if that's safe for them to be outside. The funeral home sending 7 News a statement that says in part, it is vital for our neighbors and all in the community to know that there is absolutely no risk of any kind to them or to our community. We brought in a special care facility that is designated for crises like these and added extra protections to ensure the safety, well-being and privacy of not only the deceased, but our neighbors. Hialeah police also seen out at the site. This all happening after the health department reported another 9,344 cases throughout the state, about 2,900 in Miami-Dade County, 1,163 in Broward, and 12 in Monroe County. 77 deaths also being reported, and the statewide positivity rate at just over 11 percent. We're starting to see improvement on what is the growth rate, the rate at which our cases grow. We're, we're still way, way too high in terms of our baseline. Miami's mayor says the city will now be focusing on enforcement of COVID rules like the mass mandate. He says this week alone, hundreds of violation tickets have been handed out. Both the Miami-Dade County Police Department and the city of Miami have been out there issuing tickets all week. We, we created a special task force just for that. And on Sunday morning, a Lauder Hill police officer became one of the latest victims of the pandemic. Officer Corey Pendergrass died from complications related to COVID-19. He served on the force for over 20 years. His fellow first responders escorting him from Plantation General Hospital to a funeral home in Pompano Beach. And also happening this this week, five new testing sites have popped up throughout South Florida. You can learn more about those up on our website, WSVN.com. Reporting in Hialeah, Rafael Pires, 7 News 19. On Capitol Hill, Senate Republicans and House Democrats are not yet seeing eye to eye as a second coronavirus economic relief package proposal is expected this week. But with key benefits for Americans set to expire soon, now it's a race against time. The 19th Robin Simmons is at the SAT Center with the latest on this. Robin? And Craig, with that time running out, both sides are scrambling, trying to put together a proposal. Will you stay in session until a deal is negotiated? We can't go home without it. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the most senior Democrat in Washington, D.C., says it's simple. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says Senate Republicans have been working with the Trump White House on their version of a new coronavirus stimulus package. He says giving Americans another $600 a week in federal unemployment assistance is not the answer. We knew there was going to be large unemployment. We had a technical issue with the states and how they were going to be able to do this. So we picked a a, a number that on the average looked okay, but what we've seen is now that we want to have the technical correction. The Republican plan includes $1,200 checks for many Americans, unemployment aid to replace up to 70% of wages, reemployment and retention bonuses, tax credits for small businesses, and to also lengthen the federal eviction moratorium. It's Speaker the Pelosi says the lack of federal assistance has left millions in dire straits and simplicity and speed are the key. Let me just say this. The reason the reason we had $600 was its simplicity. 
And figuring out 70% of somebody's wages, people don't all make a salary, maybe they do, they make wages, and they sometimes have it uh, vary. So why don't we just keep it simple? Unemployment benefits and the, uh, the enhancement, which is so essential right now. But as novel coronavirus cases spike across the U.S., an early problem is becoming an issue yet again, a lack of testing and slow turnaround. We've done over 54 million million tests, 770,000 a day. That's not a 140% increase, that's a 140 fold increase in terms of turnaround. Admiral Brett Girard blames large commercial labs, Quest and LabCorp, which do about half the testing in the U.S. for the delays. The Harvard Global Health Institute recommends 3.5 to 5 million COVID-19 tests every day. Right now, fewer than 1 million people are tested every day in the U.S. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says his home state, New York, is just one place where he says Republican inaction could have a major impact. We Democrats passed a bill two months ago, and yet we've got nothing from our Republican colleagues. President Trump's in one place, some Senate Republicans are in another, and some Senate Republicans are in a third. But as they're dithering, we have come to three cliffs this week. Unemployment insurance, protection for renters, protection for state and local government workers. And if we do nothing, over a million New Yorkers could be hurt and hurt badly. The Secretary for Health and Human Services says the administration is still pushing for schools to reopen in the fall, but the final decision will be left to local leaders. Live at the Satellite Center, Robin Simmons, 7 News 19. Strong storm surge causing damage in Texas after Hurricane Hannah made landfall last night. Hannah weakened to a tropical depression and is no longer being tracked as a tropical system. It did provide an awful lot of wet weather for a good part of South Texas. 19 Sheldon Fox is in the newsplex with reaction from some of the people there. Sheldon? Craig and Belkey's threats of flooding and possible tornadoes adding to the list of concerns from a state already reeling from the coronavirus pandemic. Whoa! Hanging on to their hats and their tall cans. Hurricane Hannah made misery for parts of coastal Texas, and though they've seen worse hurricanes, this storm was still an unwanted guest in the Lone Star State. With its nasty winds, it also caused a fire at this marina, not to mention stress and sadness. The marina is my baby. I, I worked very hard there, and it was sad. In Port Mansfield, it was no picnic. People dealt with downed power lines, destroyed marina doors, damaged roofs, and a doozy of a truck wreck. We woke up to the worst of our fears. Whipping winds gave coastal Texans all they wanted. I didn't know it was going to blow this bad and blow a bunch of places of roofs and signs down and everything. Downgraded to a tropical storm. Hannah hovered over the U.S.-Mexico border with winds of nearly 50 miles per hour. It was expected to bring as much as 18 inches of rain on parts of South Texas and northeastern Mexico. More than 250,000 people have been left without power. We're in the Plex. Sheldon Fox, 7 News 19. Also here on 7, investigators hoping a critical clue could lead them to a shooter, a string of shootings over the weekend in Miami-Dade, leaving three children shot, one of them just a baby. The night team's Franklin White reports from outside Jackson Memorial Hospital. The sound of gunfire and a car seen speeding away. It's just one of two back-to-back -back shootings following a violent South Florida weekend. Miami-Dade police say bullets first tore through Northwest Miami-Dade following a drive-by shooting near the intersection of Northwest 27th Avenue and 51st Street Saturday night. Listen again to the bullets. And watch as a car speeds off. There, cops say two adults and two minors were struck and rushed to Jackson. The Miami-Dade police director describing the youngest victims as a baby and a child. Witnesses telling us that child was a young girl and appeared to be lifeless. Just seeing the baby just lying there, you know, the police 
rushing back and forth, trying to, you know, try to do the best for the baby. It was just something that you wouldn't want to wish on anybody. Shots also fired in Southwest Miami-Dade. This surveillance video showing the moments following that shooting as people are seen running for cover. The Miami-Dade school superintendent tweeting that a teen was shot and injured during a house party. Back in Northwest Miami-Dade, residents say they're praying for the victims and for an end to the violence. It's something that, you know, it's, it, it sucks, but it's normal here. You know, it's, it's always gunfire going on over here, but it's something you don't wish on anybody, especially in a community like ours. And right now, the investigation continues, but police need your help locating the shooter in both shootings. If you can help, you're asked to call police immediately. Reporting in Miami, Franklin White, 7 News, 19. Still ahead, we will uh, have a look at the forecast. We head on into a new week. Live pictures outside where it is hot, hot, hot. Brent's going to be back to bring us up to date. And a final ride to remember for the late Congressman John Lewis, his body crossing the historic bridge that cemented his legacy as a civil rights icon. Hi everybody, I'm Steve Shapiro. Join me right after the news for the Lexus Sports Extra. Several Marlins are now in quarantine due to the coronavirus. FIU football coach Butch Davis has lofty goals. Hall of Famer Terrell Owens asked for another chance. The Panthers travel to Canada. Insider George Richards joins us. Will there be high school football this year? All on Sports Extra in about 12 minutes. I'll look for you. For the latest news, weather, and sports, tap the 7 News app. It's free. Just search WSBN in your app store. Sponsored by Paul Baines Roofing. Experience. Experience. Dedicated. Dedicated. Real. Real. Trusted. Trusted. South Florida's most watched morning news. 7 News. Today in Florida. Hi. Joe Namath here. And like you, I'm at home staying safe. But I wanted to get this message out. To make these uncertain times a bit easier and safer while at home, Medicare Advantage plans have added new benefits including telephone appointments with your doctors, in-home aids, home-delivered meals, home-delivered prescriptions, and so much more. But you don't get all the benefits automatically. You need to enroll. The easiest way to enroll is to call the Medicare Coverage Helpline. It's now more important than ever to make sure your Medicare coverage is up to date. We all have a few minutes to make a phone call to focus on our health. Get what you're entitled to. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-833-2007. That's 1-800-833-2007 now. People over the age. This is South Florida's Choice for News. 7 News. The late Congressman John Lewis honored in his home state of Alabama today. The long-serving lawmaker's casket carried across Selma's Edmund Pettus Bridge one last time. The same place where he and other civil rights leaders were beaten by state police in 1965 while fighting for equality. Congressman Lewis's next stop, the Alabama State Capitol in Montgomery, where he was lying in state. This week, his body will be brought to Washington before his funeral in Georgia, where he'll make one, he'll make history that is one more time as the first black man to lie in state at the Capitol there. Lewis died at the age of 80 after a battle with pancreatic cancer. Now, seven weather with meteorologist Grant Cameron. And before we look forward, let's look back just a bit. Broward County, Fort Lauderdale. That's where we went from uh, plenty of sunshine late in the afternoon to mostly cloudy skies first portion of the evening. Right now, 81 in Fort Lauderdale, 82 in Miami, and a range of temperatures as warm as 85 officially in Key West. Big difference because most of the weekend involved a breeze. Wind speeds have gone calm, though, and that's going to make it feel even more muggy out there. 71.
71% relative humidity for tonight. Notice pretty quiet out toward the Atlantic. That is the area we expect more showers to form through the overnight. In the meantime, just looking at some dwindling activity in the uh, Gulf of Mexico with some storms and then under the approach of a few additional showers and storms getting a little closer to the keys out of the straits. So we're going to keep an eye on those. Models saying this, setting into your Monday morning, uh, just a few areas of showers as we go to the uh, map. Uh, beginning to get directed toward the upper keys and then eventually by the first thing in the morning some of these stray showers may dampen the very start of your day but nothing out of the ordinary for this time of the year in most places may even get by tomorrow morning and afternoon fairly dry 2500 miles away that is an area of low pressure not a classified system in the tropics at least for now but that could change over time national hurricane center is keeping their eye on this general spin in the middle of the atlantic it has plenty of warm uh, water that will help it most likely grow. Limited uh, effects to, to really weaken it, although there is a little bit of drier Saharan dust north and west of the system. Here's what the models say in the tropics and what we'll be watching all week. High pressure steering the disturbance, taking it to the west northwest. That would take it very close to the Leeward Islands, possibly Puerto Rico, and then beyond that, it's anybody's guess. The models start to diverge just a bit, and uh, that potential for uh, perhaps some tropical weather uh, could be in the distant future, maybe a week away. We'll have to watch as the week goes on. Until then, just some sea breeze, different showers. We'll look for most of that activity across the inland sections, and then late in the day, a little drift toward the east. Here's your forecast, beginning with the marine advisory. No concerns, two feet seas, and a light shop in the bay waters. Isolated random rain showers through the overnight, heating up to typical levels near 90 during the day on Monday and Tuesday with mostly inland based storms, maybe some Saharan dust with haze on Friday, and we watch the tropics all week. That's your 7 on 7 forecast. Tomorrow on 7 News at 10. Hello, everybody. I'm Howard Finkelstein. And I'm Patrick Frazier with a look at the next Help Me, Howard. We are supposed to go to uh, San Francisco and L.A. for two weeks this summer. But when Melanie canceled, Airbnb refused to return her $2,600 deposit. I was all prepared, and then COVID hit. Sandra's wedding plans got crushed by COVID, and she can't get her $3,000 deposit back. So how do you get money returned if COVID ruins your event? Help Me, Howard has some answers. Tomorrow at 10 on 7 News. Hi, I'm Ivory Nutrera. Over 23 years ago, I opened the first Brazilian steakhouse in the United States. Rodizio Grill is my love letter to my homeland of Brazil, and also to everyone who enjoys family, friends, and abundant food. I would like to personally invite you to come enjoy the Rodizio Grill experience for yourself. Rodizio Grill, the Brazilian steakhouse, now open at Dania Point. People over the age of 65 and those with underlying conditions are at risk of severe complications from COVID-19 and should avoid crowds and minimize contact outside the home. For the rest of us, be sure to avoid the three C's. That's closed spaces, crowded places, and close contact settings. Help protect Florida's most vulnerable. And don't forget to wear a mask. Learn more at floridahealth.gov. I was diagnosed with plantar fasciitis, and steadily things were getting worse to the point that my knees really started to ache really bad. A lot of pain in my feet, a lot of pain in my spine. When I got these art supports, it was just that aha moment, like, hey, I don't hurt like I used to hurt before. Walk in two or three days after the fact, it was like a whole new man. They changed my life. Find what you've been missing at the Good Feet Store. Get once a year model year end savings. Now at Rick Case. The 21 Kias are here. The 2020s must go. So this week at Rick Case, get our guaranteed lowest model year end sale price. Or your money back. Plus, put zero down. Get 0% up to 72 months. And up to 1,500 trade assist cash toward any new Kia. Over 300 new vehicles in stock now. Or buy online at rickcasekiasunrise.com with home delivery. And if you don't like it, we'll bring it back. This week at Rick Case Kia. Sanitized and safe. Sunrise at the Sawgrass. This storm season, connect to 7 with a tent. 7 News, winter, and hurricane.
American Cracker app. And call on your phone or with a click. WSBN.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Stay connected to the Storm Station. 7 News. Concerns over the coronavirus also raising lots of legal questions. Patrick and Howard have some of the answers. If you have questions or concerns, you know where to find us. At WSBN.com slash Help Me Howard. That is 7 News at 11. Ciao, ciao. I'm Val Keys I'm Craig Stevens. Stay tuned. The Lexus Sports Extra is next. Steve and crew are coming along. We'll see you again tomorrow. The proceeding was a rebroadcast of 7 News, recorded earlier this evening. People over the